Hello everyone. Welcome to the third section of asynchronous JavaScript. In the previous section, we have studied synchronous process, asynchronous process and how callback functions work. We have also seen about what a callback hell is. Now in this section, we are going to learn promise, a better way to replace callback functions. We will also convert the code with promise which we wrote using callback. To begin, let's first understand the concept and the syntax of how to write a promise. So let's try to first of all create a promise. I'm using the ES6 syntax here, declaring a constant named PR. And here I'm going to say new promise. Now the syntax of promise is that it is taking a function which has two parameters resolve and reject. Now at the moment I am not going to write anything inside the callback function we have in the promise. Instead I will just display the value of the object we have created that is the PR in this case. Let me just run this code now. If I expand the displayed value you will observe that by default there is a promise status and that is pending. There is no value in the promise. Let's try to understand this pattern of promise. So any object you create which is of type promise that can have three states. One is the pending state which is by default which you can see in the output also here. There are two more states or possibilities we have with the promise. One is that the state can be resolved or it can be rejected. At the moment when we created this PR object by default it's going to be pending. So in case if we want to change the state of promise from pending to resolve then what we can do I'll just press and enter here and I will call the resolve method. Let's try to run this code and see what is the output. As you can see now a promise object is displayed and it has returned the resolved state. Earlier it was pending and now it is resolved. Of course you can also pass a value here right now it is showing undefined. If I expand the object you can see that the promise status is resolved. There are various ways to return a promise with a resolved or reject status. So normally what happens in a promise is that we may have some process here and at the end depending on the condition you may have an if condition. Let's say I take a variable here. I say let a is equal to 0 and I can put a condition here that if a let's say in case of a is 0 I want to resolve the promise at the same time with the resolve I want to pass a value now this can be a string a number it can be an object literal also right now I am just passing a string saying hello else let's put an else condition also here I am going to say reject now in the reject I would just say error now let's try to run this code at the moment a is equal to 0 so it should return the resolved state and also the value. So if I expand this object you'll observe that we have the promise status resolved and the promise value hello. Right now let's try to change the value of a I'll make it non-zero let's say one again I am just clearing this console and running the code again. Now as you can see it says that the promise is rejected at the same time there is an error occurred. If I expand this of course the promise status is rejected and the value which is returned by promise is the error. This is the string which we have passed while rejecting the promise. So this is a basic syntax of promise with reject resolve and initially it is always pending. Most of the time we see that promises are thenable. It is like this, thenable. It means whenever there is a promise 
we write the chaining syntax to deal with the resolve or the reject state in the same case where we have used console.log pr we normally write like this pr dot then so when this promise is resolved that is it is returning the resolve state then it is going to send that state here in the then syntax here we have a function a callback function and this function is called when the resolve is executed so resolve is returned with a value so this value is also passed in this function let's say a message and we try to display the same message here also I am going to write dot catch this is chaining we are going to discuss chaining in detail as we go on even in the catch there is going to be a callback function right so if you have rejection this value is passed to the catch function parameter so here I can say maybe ERR and that also I will display so now we do not want to display this value of PR instead we want to display the resolve and the value which is passed or reject and the value which is passed let's run this and see what is the output as you can see because right now a is 0 and resolve is a state which passes a value hello if I change the value of a from 0 to 1 now if we run it's going to say error so here now we have tried the dot then we can have multiple then with promises generally we see that whenever we use promise we have an asynchronous process that means the resolve or the rejection you may have but that will be with some asynchronous process so if I want to just simulate asynchronous process I can certainly say set timeout here and I can have a function which is going to resolve maybe after two seconds that is 2000 milliseconds so I'm going to put the if condition in the timeout so after two seconds it's going to resolve or reject this is just a simulation normally we have Ajax call or any asynchronous process where it's going to take some time and it's not going to execute immediately let's try to run this as well and see what is the output so after two seconds this is going to get rejected or this is going to resolve the request we try to implement square functionality with the help of callback function in previous video let's try to convert the same callback function and the square functionality using promise alright so this was the code we had in previous video where we were trying to find the square of a number using a callback function so square is the function which takes two parameters one is the number and second is the function itself that gets passed to this parameter callback callback function gets called from the square function and we are just trying to find square so returning number into number and that value is passed here in the result and that gets displayed so as you can see the output is 25 let's try to convert this using a promise when we have a promise we are going to write the square function that is we are going to call the function and we are passing the value in the function but this function will be returning a promise so here I am saying the then statement which is going to take a function where the result will be passed and of course the very same result we are going to display using the then syntax and inside this result 
the value is passed and that is getting displayed. Let's try to convert this square function which returns a promise now. So the function square remains as it is. At the most I can write this function as a function expression. So let's say const square which is going to take a parameter the number and I'm using the ES6 syntax that is creating an arrow function. Now this function should return a promise. So we are going to create the promise here. Again I'm creating the PR object and saying that the new promise which takes a function and in the function there will be two parameters resolve and reject. And here I'm going to resolve the promise with the square of a number. Because this function is returning a promise that is the PR object. We are going to say return PR at the end. Let's try to run this code and see how it looks. Now as you can see that the output is 25. That means we have converted the callback function into a promise. We can certainly write the similar thing with even a different syntax. Instead of returning the PR object separately, what we can do is we can write a return statement here only. Let's try to change the value to see the program is running absolutely fine. So when I run this, as you can see the output is 36. So the callback function can be converted into a promise with this syntax. We can certainly put a set timeout before we resolve just to simulate an asynchronous process. And to make it an asynchronous process, we are going to add a set timeout here. Set timeout takes a function. So I'm writing a function. And putting this resolve statement inside the set timeout. This I'm going to keep 2000 milliseconds. So after two seconds, this promise will be resolved. Let's try to run the code again. After two seconds, as you can see, the output is the square of number six. This is how we can configure a promise with an asynchronous process. Mind you that this process can be replaced with an AJAX call or any API call. Let's also try to extend the very same example by chaining the promise. Let's say this result which we are getting that we need to process further. So I'm going to return the square function with a new value, the result. Now because this square function returns a promise, we can further chain this with a new dot then. Here again I'm going to say result 1. and we try to display the result one. Let's run this code now. So first time the promise is resolved with value 36. The next process is again executed. After two more seconds, it will display the next result. You can keep on adding the dot then and you can add more chains to this promise. Normally you will have some process here that is passed to the main function then that result is passed to the next function which again returns a promise. That is how you chain a process. At the end you may have a catch statement which catches all the errors. In short promise is a better way to write a callback function but there is also even an improved way introduced in the newer version of JavaScript and that is using async await with a function. That's going to be our next section.